Assalamu alaikum. <coughs> well, children, yesterday we solved two questions of the first exercise. And you were told this exercise is purely based on definitions. Definitions of trigonometric ratios. We applied the definitions yesterday in the first two questions. Let us proceed. Solve some more questions today from that exercise based on definition. So that we can get a better understanding of the application of definitions. Let us begin from question number three today. According to the statement, we have sine of A equal to three by four. This is given to us. Sine A is equal to 3 by 4. You were earlier told that the definitions of trigonometric ratios are applicable only in case of right triangles. We define trigonometric ratios in terms of right triangles only. So therefore, sine of A equal to 3 by 4 will also be defined in terms of a right triangle. In the previous two questions, question number 1, if you have a look on, the statement consisted of the words in triangle ABC, right angle there B, you are given there is a right triangle. Whereas in question number 2, you were referred to a figure. It is written there in figure 8.13. So, so you are referred to a triangle. And when you look at that triangle there, the triangle has an angle of 90 degrees. Which means the triangle is again a right triangle. The reference to right triangle therefore was in the statement itself. Directly it was given there. But now you don't have any reference to the right triangle. In the question as well as the questions that will follow, will have similar questions. No reference to the right triangle will be there. But a certain trigonometric ratio will be given. And since the definition can be applied only in case of right triangle, therefore, it will mean the result which is given is in terms of a right triangle. Therefore, to begin with, to set out the solution, you will have to first draw a right triangle. Consider this to be a right triangle. Now in this right triangle, <clears throat> what are the names of the vertices? According to the right triangle, you were told last time, sine A is written here. The trigonometric ratios you were told are in terms of acute angles of the right triangle. And then we know each right triangle has two acute angles. If we decide to name this triangle as ABC, then since the trigonometric sign, trigonometric ratio sign is associated with angle A here. Therefore, this A will be one of the acute angles. <clears throat> Thus, at one of the vertices, the name of one of the vertices which contain an acute angle, we can name as A. Means either this vertex will have name as A, because angle formed here is an acute angle, or this vertex will have an angle A, name of this vertex will be angle A because this also is acute angle. You have to choose. Let us consider this as angle A. Let us name the triangle as ABC. Now the position of A is clear to us. We decided that 
from the trigonometric I should given. A was the alphabet involved. A is the vertex involved here, acute angle involved here. So one of the acute angles we named as A. The remaining two vertices you can name on your own choice. If you want to name the triangle as ABC, then location of A you have. Now B and C you can choose of your own choice. You may choose right angle to be at A at B or right angle to be at C. In case you choose right angle to be at B, then this vertex will be C. And the name then becomes ABC. It is triangle ABC, therefore right angled at B. And in this, we have to use A as the acute angle. Why we use A as the acute angle? Why not C? Because that A is involved in the question. We are given sine of acute angle A. So acute angle A we have to use. Now, with respect to this acute angle A, you have to decide which side will be base, which side will be perpendicular. Hypotenuse, of course, is the side opposite to the right angle. AC is therefore the hypotenuse. Opposite to angle B, the right angle. Now, which side will be base and which side will be perpendicular? Recollect. We have been doing this right from the first lecture of this chapter. To decide which is base, which is perpendicular, you were told, find out the arms of the acute angle that you have chosen. Here the acute angle chosen is A, which are its arms. AC is one of its arms, which is called hypotenuse. Second arm of this is AB and this second arm we call as base. AB is therefore the base. AC is the hypotenuse. The third side is the perpendicular. Well, having introduced this, let us now begin the solution of this. We have sine A equal to 3 by 4. By definition, we know sine is perpendicular by hypotenuse. Therefore, applying that definition here, applying that definition here, sine A perpendicular by hypotenuse the name of the perpendicular is BC therefore it will be BC by hypotenuse is AC it becomes BC by AC there therefore BC by AC is sine A already we know sine A is 3 by 4 which is given to us then according to Euclid's axiom Things which are equal to the same thing are equal to each other. Sign A is same here in both these results. Therefore, we'll have 3 by 4 equal to BC by AC. In the previous two questions, the lengths of two sides were given directly. In question number 1, measurement of AB was given to be 24 cm, measurement of BC was given to be 7 cm, directly their measurements were given and the unit used was centimeter. In question number 2, the lengths were directly given, lengths of two sides, PQ was 12 cm, PR was 13 cm, those were directly given. But in this question and the questions that will follow, you will not be given directly the sides, lengths of sides. Those are indirectly given. And those are given in the form of a ratio here. BC by AC we have equal to 3 by 4. Means BC is 3 parts. Numerator, numerator. BC is 3 parts. AC is 4 parts. This 3 by 4 is the lowest form of this fraction. It is in the lowest form. We can have number of equivalent fractions which in lowest form will be 3 by 4 for example in the the fraction 30 by 40 also can be written as 3 by 4 in the lowest form when you cancel the common factor 10 that common factor is excluded is cancelled 
if we have for example 9 by 12 as a fraction the lowest form of this also will be 3 by 4 we cancel the common factor here again 3 was the common factor 3 3s are 9 3 4s are 12 for example we have 15 by 20 a fraction what is the lowest form of this again some common factor is there 5 is this time the common factor the lowest form when you cancel the common factor will again be 3 by 4 so this 3 by 4 which is given to us it is the lowest form of that actually the measurement can be anything which in lowest form can be written as 3 by 4 therefore to accommodate that common factor which we do not know what is the common factor we choose that common factor of our own choice we may use some real number k we may use a we may use p we may use m any real number can be used the real number will be represented by some alphabet m p q a k anything or we may simply say use the word units with that we'll say that this bc is three units that unit will have any value any common factor as the value here it is 10 here it is 3 here it is 5 that unit is therefore 10 here that unit is here 3 that unit is here 5 so we'll say three units ac we'll say is four units instead of using some real number as common factor k a b you may use you can use you can simply use the word units which will involve that common factor that has been cancelled so therefore we can say bc is three units and ac is four units What that unit is, is the common factor that we have in the actual values of BC and AC. That is the value of that unit there. So therefore I will prefer to use the word unit here instead of using some symbolic representation of some common factor, some uh, of that common factor. Thus, we got the lengths of the two sides. And with that, we have reached to the first step of the previous two questions where the lengths of two sides were known to us. The remaining procedure will now be same. You were told yesterday that what is required to find in the question, what, is, what we are asked to find in the question, we shall find that by applying definitions only after we know the lengths of all the three sides. We know only two sides here so far. Yesterday also the questions we did, we knew two sides only. And then we found the third side in those questions also by applying Pythagoras theorem. For this question also and the questions that will follow, we will find therefore the third side by applying Pythagoras theorem. Let us apply the Pythagoras theorem and find the third side. We know what will you have according to Pythagoras theorem? AC square, hypotenuse square is equal to sum of the squares of the other two sides. AB square plus BC square. This is Pythagoras theorem. Putting in the values, we know AC, we know BC, we know. Let us use those and find the third side BC, th third side AB. 4 square is equal to AB square plus 3 square. 16 is equal to AB square plus 9. Now to find AB, we'll have to first transpose 9. It is plus 9 as you transpose it. It will become minus 9. 16 minus 9 is therefore equal to AB square. 7 is equal to AB square. 
16 minus 9 is 7. 7 is equal to AB square. Now this is the value of AB square. <coughs> square of AB. We need AB. To get AB you will have to remove this square. And how did we remove this square yesterday in those questions? We changed the left hand side also to square yesterday. But 7 is not a perfect square number. The questions we did yesterday, in both the questions we got that as a perfect square. But now we are not getting it as a, as a perfect square number. To make it a square, you will have to use the radical sign. <coughs> square root. Thus, we'll change 7 to square. It will be square of square root 7. Is equal to AB square. And then you can cancel square with square to conclude that AB is equal to square root 7. This is the length of the third side. Now will this AB be in centimeters, meters, feet? Nothing can be said because we do not have the basic unit, the unit of the first two quantities. We have used simply the word units with them. It can be in centimeters, it can be in meters, it can be in kilometers. Likewise, this root 7 also can also be in the corresponding units. Had it been centimeter here, this also would be in centimeters. Had this been in meters here, this also would be in meters. But since we don't have, we have used the word units there, therefore we'll use the word units with root 7 also. AB is equal to square root 7. Knowing all the three sides, BC is three units, AC is four units, AB is square root seven units. Now we will find what we are asked to find. So according to the statement, we are asked to calculate cos A and tan A. Let us use definitions to find those right now. Cos A. Let us first find cos A. To find cos A, what will we do? We'll first use the definition of cos A and then put in their corresponding values. Definition of cos A, you will get from the second part of that statement. You were told last time. Curly black here. Three words. Curly black here gives us the definition of cos. And therefore, by cos, we mean base by hypotenuse c of curly is for cos trigonometric ratio b of black gives us base h of here gives us hypotenuse so cos is base by hypotenuse cos a by definition is base by hypotenuse Now, in terms of this right triangle, let us identify base, hypotenuse. The name of the base is AB. We have already identified them. AB divided by hypotenuse is AC. Put in their values. Value of cos A is therefore AB by AC. What is the measurement of AB we just now got under root 7? Divided by what is the measurement of AC? It was given to us 4. If you write units word with both of these, these will then cancel. Unit and unit word will cancel. So you will be left with only square root 7 by 4. That is the value of cos A. We have to find tan A also. And to find tan A, now use the definition of tan. This definition you can remember by using that last part of that statement to present beauty. P of 2 will lead us to tan. P of present will lead us to perpendicular. That will be numerator here. Perpendicular. And B of beauty will lead us to base. That will be the denominator. Thus tan is perpendicular by base. Using the the names of perpendicular and base in case of this right triangle we have already identified with respect to acute angle A BC is the perpendicular 
divided by AB is the base, which is BC by AB. Then what is the value of tan A? Use the values of BC and AB. BC was given to us equal to 3 divided by AB we have found equal to root 7. And here also, like the previous case, that units and units will cancel, we'll be left with 3 by under root 7. That is the value of tan A. And with that, this question number 3 comes to end. Next we have question number four. In question number four, we are given that 15 multiplied by cot A is equal to eight. We are asked to find sine A and sec A. Previously, we were asked to find cos A and tan A. This time, we are asked to find sin A and sec A. Now, before we reach to finding of those, we complete this question. We conclude the results. We conclude with the results. We'll find out which triangle we can use here. Which acute angle you will have to use. And then, what are the measures of the sides as we did in the previous questions? Well, unlike the previous question, here RHS is 8. It is not in the form of a fraction here as in the previous question. And then, our LHS here is not the trigonometric ratio alone. It is trigonometric ratio multiplied by 15 this time. Previously, it was just sine A, sine A multiplied by 1. You have to isolate that trigonometric ratio. Keep it alone on one side to begin with. Now, isolating cot A means you have to transpose this 15. You will have a similar procedure applied that can be applied later on in question number 8 also, where you have 3 cot A equal to 4. In instead of 15, we have 3 there. And in instead of 8, we have 4 there. In that question also, you will have to first isolate cot A. Say, like this. You have to isolate cot A. Cot A, as you isolate this cot A here, means you have to transpose 3. You have to transpose 15 here. This 15, when transposed, will become, will give us cot of A equal to 8 by 15. 15 that we have transposed has gone to the denominator. What will happen here? We'll have to transpose 3. We'll get cot A equal to 4 by 3. That will be done later in case of question number 8. This is the shape, the form in which our previous question was given. So we changed it to the previous question shape. Where instead of cot, we had trigonometric ratio sine. The procedure of solving therefore now will be similar to that question. This is the extra step that we have. Transposing this 15. Remaining procedure will be same. We shall again draw therefore a right triangle. Like previous questions, this is the right triangle. And if we again name this triangle as ABC, why we choose particularly ABC here? Because that A is involved here. Had it been some other alphabet, we could accordingly change the name of the triangle also. Since A is involved in the question as an acute angle, therefore we prefer to use the name involving A. And one such name we can choose as ABC. Now, as we name this triangle as ABC, where should we write A? Where should we write B? Where should we write C? Just now I explained in the previous question. A will be the acute angle. 
Since we have in the figure two acute angles, one of those you have to name as A. You have to choose. Let us again, like previous question, choose this as A. Now to complete the name of the triangle, ABC we have to name the triangle. A, the location of A we know. B and C you can choose of your own choice. You can, like previous question, name this as B and then this will be C. And if instead of choosing this as B, you choose this as C, then this will be B. There is no harm even if you put this as C and this as B. There is no harm. Let us consider therefore the triangle right angled at B. We have to use again A as the acute angle. We will not use C as the acute angle. Why? Because A is involved in the question. And with respect to A, decide again which is the base, which is the perpendicular. AB will be the base. BC will be the perpendicular. AC is the hypotenuse. It is the side opposite to angle B, right angle, hypotenuse. Now having identified with respect to angle A, which side is base, which side is perpendicular, let us use the definition of this time it is caught. Previously in the previous question it was sine. Now it is caught. We know caught of A is equal to definition of caught. You have seen last time caught is defined as the reciprocal of tan. The definition of caught you cannot get from that statement. Some people have curly black hair to present you to. That gives us the definitions of sine, cos, and tan. The remaining three, cot, sec, and cosec, we get in the form of reciprocals of those three. And you were told cot is the reciprocal of tan. Tan being perpendicular by base, what will be cot? Reciprocal of perpendicular by base is base by perpendicular. So, cot is base by perpendicular. Now, identifying base and perpendicular, we have already identified AB is the AB is the base divided by BC is the perpendicular. It is therefore AB by BC, cot of A, AB by BC. Thus, we have two results. Cot of A is 8 by 15. Cot of A is AB by BC. We use Euclid's action. We therefore get AB by BC equal to 8 by 15. Euclid is action. Things which are equal to the same thing are equal to each other. And then by comparing, numerator will be equal to numerator, denominator will be equal to denominator. You will get AB is equal to 8, BC equal to 15. And then you are told we don't have the unit here. Because this 8 by 15 is in the lowest form, this fraction is in the lowest form, you were told we'll use the word units with it. So AB will have 8 units, BC will have 15 units. Majors of two sides, therefore, we got. Third will be found by applying Pythagoras theorem. Let us find by applying Pythagoras theorem. AC square is equal to AB square plus BC square. It is Pythagoras theorem. Putting in the values we know, we have AC square is equal to 8 square plus 15 square. Simplifying further, AC square will be 64 plus 225. Square of 8 is 64. Square of 15 is 225. Add them. Square of AC is then 289. Which is the square of 17. You can cancel square with square. And thus AC is equal to 17 units. This is the measurement of third side. Now, once you get the majors of all the three sides, then find the trigonometric ratios you are asked to find in the question.
we are asked to find first sin a and then sec a right therefore sin a is equal to find sin a let us use the definition of sin definition of sin is given by the first part of that statement some people have sin is perpendicular by hypotenuse We have already identified perpendicular and base. BC is the perpendicular. AC is the hypotenuse. Use their values. BC is 15 divided by AC is 17. So sine A is 15 by 17. Then you have to find sec A. Again, as I said, sec A. You have to define in terms of cos. Definition of sec you cannot directly get from that statement. It is defined in the form of reciprocal of cos. Since cos is based by hypotenuse, therefore sec will be hypotenuse by base. Reciprocal of cos. It is therefore AC by AB. Hypotenuse by base. Use the values of AC and AB. AC is 17 divided by AB is 8. Thus, sec A is 17 by 8. That completes our question number 4. Question number 5, I shall leave for you. I would like you to do that. Procedure is same. With only one thing that I would like to introduce, because this time the trigonometric ratio which is given sec theta, it has the acute angle theta. Earlier we used it to have acute angle A, sin A was given, cot A was given, this time it is sec theta. A Greek symbol is used here for an acute angle theta. So what you have to do, we will come across later in some more questions. What you have to do, when you draw the right triangle, this time the name of the right triangle you have to randomly use because alphabet, English alphabets are not involved over there as the names of acute angle. It is a Greek symbol. You have to randomly name the triangle. <coughs> So you are free to use, you may use ABC, you may use PQR, you may use LMN, you may use XYZ, whatever you will decide, you can write the names. Let us for the sake of convenience use this time the name of the triangle as XYZ. It is right angled at Y. Or for that matter, we may write ABC, like in the previous questions. But you have to randomly use. Why we randomly gave the name this time? Because the acute angle involved in the question this time is a Greek symbol. It is not an English alphabet. So randomly we use. A, B, C I gave here. X, Y, Z I gave here. And then the, in the first case we find it is right angled at Y. The two, uh, two, the two acute angles therefore are, are at vertex X and vertex Z. One of those acute angles then you will represent by theta. And you will write that theta in the interior of the triangle. Representing one of the acute angles. For example, I have represented Z here by theta. Or if you would like to represent angle X, you can write the angle X as theta. Likewise, if your triangle is ABC, it is right angle at B. Acute angles are A and C then one of those acute angles, A or C, you have to represent by theta. Likewise, for example, I shall write here, angle C is theta. Now what will you do? With respect to this theta now, you have to identify the base and the perpendicular. Here also with respect to theta, you will identify the base and the perpendicular. That is the concept you have to apply. Rest of the procedure will be same. You have to find all other trigonometric ratios. 
in the previous two questions you have to find only two trigonometric ratios cos a and tan a in question number 3 sin a and sec a in question number 4 here you are asked to find all other trigonometric ratios we have a total of how many trigonometric ratios 6 sin cos tan cot sec cosec you are not asked to find all the six word other is written there which ones you have to leave the one which is given excluding that remaining five you have to find now the given one is sec theta so therefore you will exclude sec theta remaining five you will find you will find sin theta you will find cos theta and remember theta is the acute angle this time therefore it will not be sin a it will be sin theta because theta is the acute angle to be used this time you have to find cos theta you have to find tan theta you have to find cot theta sec theta you will exclude because that is given and you have to find cosec theta i shall leave this question for you as homework over to question number 6 look at the statement of this question number 6 if angle a and angle b are acute angles this time names of two acute angles are given alphabets are written a and b so therefore you cannot randomly choose the triangle previously i gave the name of the triangle as xyz randomly a b c randomly because the alphabets were not involved in the statement this time you have the angles acute angles in the form of english alphabets therefore you will be restricted you have to use the name of the triangle involving these alphabets as acute angles a and b therefore we will choose the name of the triangle to be abc this is the right triangle now will it be right angle at a will it be right angle at b or right angle at c the reference is in the question itself statement says a and b are acute angles there are two acute angles in the right triangle their names are given a and b are the acute angles so therefore this vertex will be a this vertex will be b those are acute angles you cannot name a here it's not the acute angle or you cannot name b here again it is not an acute angle it is a right angle we will name therefore this vertex as c abc is a right triangle therefore right angled at c such that now this is another given information cos a is equal to cos b this is given to us cos with respect to acute angle a and cos with respect to acute angle b these are equal this is given to us then you have to show that angle a is equal to angle b these acute angles you have to show are equal now how to solve this we'll apply definitions in order to solve this definition of cos a and cos b because those are given to be equal we know by definition cos is based by hypotenuse second part of that statement curly black here cos is based by hypotenuse and then apply that in terms of acute angle a as well as acute angle b cos a is equal to cos b is given to us well this is rough part with respect to angle a when we choose angle a as the acute angle can you identify and tell me which side will call as base with respect to acute angle a with respect to acute angle a you were told to find base and perpendicular identify first the arms of that angle angle a arms of angle a are ac and ab and then you were told one out of the two will be definitely a hypotenuse the hypotenuse and we find here ab is the hypotenuse therefore ac will be the base with respect to angle a third side bc then will be the perpendicular and similarly with respect to angle b which side will call as base now you find arms of angle b this time you have bc you have ab ab is the hypotenuse then the 
second side BC will become the base. With respect to angle A, AC is the base. With respect to angle B, BC is the base. And third side in either case will be the perpendicular. AB is of course the hypotenuse, the first side. Well, we know cos of A is equal to cos of B. It is given to us. Therefore, applying definitions, cos base by hypotenuse. Therefore, when we choose angle A, base by hypotenuse will mean, base in, with respect to angle A, base is AC. So it will be AC by AB. AB is the hypotenuse. AC by AB is equal to. Likewise, apply the definition, but now this time with respect to angle B, cos, definition of cos is again based by hypotenuse. But this time, base you have to decide with respect to angle B, and we have already seen that in the rough column. It is BC, therefore cos B will be BC by AB. It is by using definitions. Definition of cos. You got AC by AB equal to BC by AB. Transpose this AB from left side to right side, you will get AC is equal to BC by AB multiplied by divide on transposing becomes multiply. That will help us to cancel AB and AB. What is therefore left? AC is equal to BC. Thus we got two sides of this triangle are equal. Which two sides? AC and BC. Equal sides. And then you have read in the previous class, you have proved a theorem. Equal sides of a triangle have equal angles opposite to them. And apply that here. Since AC and BC are equal, therefore their opposite angles will be equal. Can you name the angle opposite to AC side? It is angle B. And the angle opposite to BC side, it is angle A. So what will we have? Therefore, angle B is equal to angle A. For the reason, because angles opposite to equal sides of a triangle are equal. That was the result to be proved. Angle B equal to angle A. That completes the solution of this question. I will conclude today here because that question number seven we won't be able to complete today. Let us call this a day.